President Obama really think no one at Fox will see a government spy in our newsroom? Tonight, an FCC commissioner goes on the record and blows the whistle on a plan to install spies in newsrooms. They can call it something else, like a monitor, but no one's that stupid. We know exactly what they're trying to do. The FCC commissioner who blew the whistle is here to go on the record. Commissioner Ajit Pai joins us. Nice to see you, sir. Thanks for having me. Okay, so your op-ed has blown the whistle on this. Tell me exactly what is it the FCC wants to do and why you wrote your op-ed. So the FCC is proposing to do what it is calling a critical information needs or SIN study. And as a part of this study, they will be sending researcher, researchers into newsrooms across the country, television and uh, broadcast and newspapers to try and figure out why they cover the stories that they do. And they've identified eight categories of news that they think news people should be covering. And some of the questions they ask are hardly technical. Uh, they're asking reporters, for example, have you ever wanted to cover a story and been told by the management that you can't do so? And so as I looked into the study design, I got a little more concerned about what this implicated for our First Amendment values. And that's why I wrote the editorial uh, that you mentioned in the Wall Street Journal. What's been the response by the other members of the uh, F FCC? I haven't talked to all of my colleagues, but I am pleased to report that uh, tonight uh, the chairman of the FCC, Tom Wheeler, has instructed the contractor who will be doing this study uh, to remove questions from the study relating to news philosophy and editorial judgment. And I think that's a positive step, uh, but of course the devil's in the details when it comes to the actual study as implemented. You know, it may be a positive step, but who in his, in his I mean, you'd have to be out of your mind to have proposed this in the first place. I mean, so like, you know, yeah, I suppose that's great that the commissioner has now, after everyone is raining all over his parade, but who in his right mind suggested this in the first place or thought it was okay to send monitors into newsrooms? Uh, so the study was designed and adopted under previous leadership, and I think the reaction that you have is the one that a lot of people in America have, and that is that the government doesn't have a place in the newsroom. One of the things that's made this country great is the fact that news for themselves, what stories to cover and how to cover them, and especially in a marketplace as competitive as this one, they don't need the government over their shoulders telling them that they're doing something wrong. Has any money been spent so far to do this? As far as I know, no. Uh, the study hasn't yet started, and that's why I think it's critical for us to make sure at the outset that either we stop the study or if it's going forward, uh, we make sure that it doesn't infringe on anyone's constitutional freedoms. What is sort of the authority for the FCC even to think that uh, that it can do this? What's, what's the statute that they, they think that they must comply with. So technically the FCC is relying on a statute that requires the FCC to report to Congress every three years on barriers that entrepreneurs and small businesses face when they're trying to get into the communications right. industry. Stop there. What does asking a question about whether or not you've been prevented from telling a story have anything to do with being a barrier? And that's exactly the concern I have, that there isn't any connection. And moreover, uh, even if there were some connection, the FCC doesn't have any regulatory authority when it comes to the print media. And so we don't tell newspapers what to cover, and newspapers nonetheless are covered under this SIN study. And, and yet, yet this was included. Newspapers are included, yet you have absolutely no authority to do that. Exactly right. All right. Um, the other thing is uh, barriers to, to entering the field. Is that right? Right. Uh, with the Internet, what in the world barrier is there to getting information out there if you want to get information out there? And this is one of the great ironies of this story is that what characterizes the market, media marketplace in 2014 is that consumers have an unparalleled amount of choice. They can go online. They can find a broadcast network that they like. They can go on cable news. They can go to a newspaper. And so given that they have so many choices and given that there's so many people competing to provide them the news that they want, there's really no reason for the FCC to inject itself into the editorial judgments of all these people. Do you see this as a government attempting to pressure news organizations? I'm not sure what the intent behind it is, but what I can tell you is that a lot of folks that I've heard from from the industry are telling me that uh, they are worried about the uh, inadvertent coercion that might happen if the FCC says, look, we're just asking questions. Well, if you're holding a broadcast license that the FCC issues, uh, you're not going to feel like it's entirely voluntarily if, if you have to answer this battery of questions that's in this 70-some page study. All right. Now, it's not even the FCC that's even going to be doing this. Is that the FCC hires outside people to do this. So we even have to spend money you know, if this were ever to happen. Frankly, I, I can't imagine any newsroom letting a, a government agent come in and do that. But is that, the, is that the FCC hires a contractor so the American taxpayer 
taxpayers are paying for these spies, as I call them, to come into the newsrooms. Uh, that's correct. The FCC is hiring contractors to do this study. And is there, and is the commissioner, in your conversation with him, does he now think, like, what was I thinking when I thought this was okay? I know he's now trying to amend the questions, but does he have any sort of back off at all and think that this is just a really bad idea? Well, in fairness to the chairman, he wasn't leading the agency when the study was designed. Does he have the power to say no? Uh, he does have the power to say no, and I'm hopeful that uh, he and my colleagues will come to embrace the basic principle that, again, the government has no place in the newsroom. Commissioner, thank you very much. I can tell you one thing is that uh, your op-ed uh, has, you know, has certainly been very helpful uh, you know, to the First Amendment. Thank you, sir. Thank you for having me.